You want to find true love this Christmas? Then kiss a random stranger in the elevator. It doesn't matter if they're in a relationship or not. And it's advice like that that got our mall Santa fired. I am proud to present this playlist, which is now the only way you can see the Merry Christmas episode, since that's been blocked due to copyright for a while. Let's see if it survives this. So enjoy a Christmas kiss, a Christmas kiss too, and Merry Christmas, hopefully. Christmas movie is such a go-to term for this kind of made-for-TV Christmas film. You know the kind I mean. These conveyor belt products get churned out every year because staying at home and watching them is much easier than leaving the house. We just naturally call movies like this Hallmark movies, even if some of them didn't even air on that network. Case in point, A Christmas Kiss, a 2011 TV movie which aired on Ion Television, but when you say Hallmark Christmas movie, you get an image in your head of exactly what kind of movie it is, to the point to where it doesn't even feel like it's synonymous with a network anymore. Even Netflix has their own. Hell, A Christmas Kiss isn't even the only Christmas TV movie to revolve around Christmas and kisses, as evidenced by something called Merry Kissmas. <laughs> Puke. A Christmas Kiss stars Laura Breckenridge, who shares a magical kiss with Brendan Fair of Roswell and CSI Miami, who happens to be the boyfriend of her mean-spirited boss Elizabeth Rom of Angel and Law and Order. The movie is written by the writer of Pick Whatever Fucking Christmas Movie Product You Want, and directed by John Stimson, who brought us Sexting in Suburbia? I don't know what that is, but it sounds more appealing than Assault in an Elevator. Hey, look, I don't have any other movies in my jacket. Thanks to last week's commercial episode, my jacket is filled with nothing but Reggie bars. And since we did one of these soulless Christmas movies last year, might as well spotlight one this year, too. Who knows, though? Maybe this will be the It's a Wonderful Life of movies everyone forgets after 10 minutes. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Don't start the movie now! They haven't finished setting up yet! Yep, much like all these movies, they're obviously filmed at any time of year but Christmas, and they spend 10 seconds on the credits! Speaking of Dear Santa, is she wearing the same wardrobe as Amy Acker from that film? Our hero Wendy is a designer, and damn, not much of a turnout. Eh, just skip theaters and air the movie on television. Good afternoon, Wendy. Oh, hi, Charlie. Are you working with the design crew? Uh, not this year. I'm too busy. Well, that's a shame. Your set designs are the best I've ever seen in all the years I've been sweeping stage floors. Charlie learned that if he replaces the word tits with set designs, people won't think that he's creepy. People still think he's creepy. As the girls go out to celebrate their show, they take the camera crew with them. Well, that's nice. The story takes place in Boston by way of Richmond, Virginia, and these girls are relatable to all the single ladies watching. I look radioactive. It's called Be Wild Body Glitter. So feel free to be wild tonight, Wim. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you and what are you doing in my apartment? They promise tonight will be a magical night. Or maybe it'll be the only Hallmark Christmas movie where they just open presents and go to bed. Unfortunately, Wendy has to leave because of her demanding boss. I will meet you guys later. Stop. Before you go, let me finish my work of art. Thank you. Don't care. Next scene. Her boss's apartment is the tits. I mean, the set designs. Hmm. 
balconies, Christmas. I hope this is just a prequel to the opening scene from Lethal Weapon. Then we meet our love interest, Eric Trump. What the fuck? This doesn't feel right. It actually kind of does. I'm not gonna let sudden plummeting death get in the way of a good bang in the elevator. every time I climax in my pants as well. Oh sure, she runs out to brag to her friends, but whenever I kiss a stranger in the elevator, she runs out and brags to the police. You know what? Girls, you told me to let loose, and I did, and it felt great. Well, that's the kind of advice that'll lead straight to a magical Christmas. Or Ted Bundy! Anyway, we saw them drink this on Sex in the City, so cheers, girls! She's then woken up in the middle of the night to pull some files for Max Shrek. This really is a Christmas movie. <laughs> Oops, I mean her boss, Priscilla Hall. I will be at the spa at the Ritz-Carlton trying to relax. <laughs> Bitch! When I say that there doesn't seem to be an aesthetic difference between a Hallmark Christmas movie and a porn... This is exactly the kind of movie I'm talking about! Five minutes later, she returns, and then Wendy realizes that the man she kissed on the elevator is Adam, Priscilla's boyfriend. Oh man, I really hope Wendy ends up with the not-single guy who randomly kissed her on an elevator and who is near proposing to Priscilla. Speaking of kissing, let's see more of that Christmas kiss passion! As romantic as licking jello off the top of your gums. Adam right away feels a little off putting. I actually do have a proposal. Yes. Don't say yes so readily before you know what I'm gonna ask. Whatever you ask me, I'll say yes, just so you know. <laughs> what I wanted to ask is if you'd be willing to decorate my house for a Christmas party. I don't know who gave him the advice to play the role as Patrick Bateman, but I'm kind of glad they did. It really sells me on the fact that he definitely murders prostitutes. I still don't know who to root for here. He didn't even recognize me. Not even a glimmer of recognition. Well, to be fair, you were incognito. To be fair... Apparently Adam doesn't recognize her because, you know, she looks so different without the glasses. Or he's just pretending not to know her because he does have a girlfriend. Either way, what a catch! This is gonna be one of those movies like Dear Santa where the one with the brain in her head is the one portrayed as a villain. We can enjoy being in Boston by having dinner with the Dostals and attending the gallery opening on Newbury Street. Can we please, please, please just focus on my foundation's party for the ballet? Please. No. These events are as important to your career as they are to my career. She has a schedule and has drive. Bitch! Real heroes have spontaneous slumber parties. <laughs> Blah, where's the ghost of Christmas Driller Killer? And I don't care where Adam gets his wealth. Because Adam's family runs the Hughes Foundation. The Hughes Foundation funds theater and art programs across the country and the world. That's why he travels so much. Pass. They're not nearly as catchy as the Hughes Corporation. Apparently, Adam travels around a lot for business, so he goes from city to city, assaulting people in elevators. Oh, when he's not quoting Shakespeare with someone. Parting is such sweet sorrow. That I shall say goodnight till it be morrow. That didn't work for dancing it's on, and it sure as shit isn't gonna work here. And if I could have my wish today. Uh, alright, alright, I take it back. Go back to quoting Shakespeare. Or just cut to an obvious spot for a commercial break. Mm -hmm. I still don't believe these actors are in Boston. Honey, we have ice cream, we have man talk, the only thing we're missing is a shoe collection, a gay best friend, and a shitty testicle joke. You know, 
If he continues to be clueless, I'd just crack his nuts. Oops, never mind. Got that one too. I think he likes her. She brings him the best coffee. It's very thoughtful. That's delicious. Where'd you get that? It's also empty. All this Shakespeare talk makes me wish I was watching Romeo and Juliet instead. He's got all the best Shakespeare works, such as... Christmas Carol, first edition. Ah, uh, yes, with that classic line, To bah humbug or not to bah humbug. Going over party planning with the soon-to-be fiancé while eyeballing the help. I can see the romance, and by that I mean the tabloids. Wendy's not that much better than Priscilla, as Wendy starts judging Priscilla for how she and Adam met. At a fundraiser in the Berkshires, I attended purposefully to meet him. I had a mutual friend introduce us. You had your sights set on him before you even met him? Is that a bit... Oh, sorry, I guess they should have randomly kissed in an elevator where he instantly forgets her. Not to say Priscilla can't be written to be terrible sometimes, too. These are absolutely... Repellent. But just to be nice, she's at least gonna hang them up on her fridge. At first, Priscilla hates Wendy's designs for she and Adam's party, but when Adam likes those designs better, she instantly takes credit for them right in front of Wendy. So she can still be a terrible person who threatens to put an end to Wendy's career. It's just that she's not that much worse than anyone else in the movie. Take Adam, who is only at the coffee shop because he couldn't make reservations at Dorcia. I'll see you tomorrow. Possibly. I have a rather crazy day, so I'm not entirely sure, but I should get going. The coffee's ready, and Priscilla's waiting for me. You have me hooked on this stuff. Please give them a business card. There's also a very thin line between a Hallmark Christmas movie and a Pure Flix movie, as evidenced by how well the creepy music fits here. I am logical. Oh, is your logic white meat or dark meat? Oh, that's so funny. Isn't it? <laughs> I don't think it works. And this talk of music only reminds me that Priscilla can be relatable. <clears throat> Should I put on some Christmas music? Oh, please, anything but. They've been playing it since Halloween. Yeah, damn right. I'm on her side. But you know who isn't on Priscilla's side? Over here. Where do you want it, baby? Because I know where I'm going to put it. <gasps> Wendy and her friends, so they broke her fucking nose! Oh, she's upset and sad about how she'll look for her own engagement. Such a monster. Better a broken nose than shitty music. Again, I'm on Team Priscilla. This music sucks! Oh, bring us a piggy pudding. Oh, bring us a piggy pudding. That doesn't mean switch to a different song only with carolers. It means stop! What is figgy pudding? I don't know, but it must be pretty good if they won't go until they get some. <laughs> hey, they brought the camera crew from earlier to go Christmas shopping with them. Again, that's very nice. As they continue on with their tree shopping, it cuts to another commercial break, making it the perfect opportunity to sit in the bathtub with a ball of tangled Christmas lights. Or we could just cut to a commercial break of our own. As we return to the movie about kissing strangers in an elevator, one thing is definitely certain about this romance. You know, tonight's the first time I ever shopped for a Christmas tree. You're kidding. <clears throat> no. Those cups are still empty. I'll say this, Brendan Fair is pretty charismatic, even if I'm still certain he's gonna drop a chainsaw on her. Here, let's bring in a ringer to make it more awkward. I like licking the spoon. Caroline actually has that listed as one of her activities on Facebook. She gets some pretty strange friend requests from it. Yeah. Anyway, on to a subject that doesn't involve people jerking off to her licking spoons. The real treat for the season, packages. Hi. Hi, uh, delivery for Priscilla, huh? Right this way. Where do you want it? Honey, your ADR is here. Also, there may be another montage. Tis the season for pine boughs and wonder. <laughs> now it's time to impress her with some figgy pudding. Figgy pudding? 
How did you find Figgy Pudding? It wasn't easy, trust me. I'm sure it's not that hard. I have a fucking Reggie bar! They bond over their hatred of Figgy Pudding, but haven't put it together that Charlie's favorite pastime is shitting in bowls of Figgy Pudding? Well, knots mean you, you're just all tied up on the inside. But if you get flutters, that means she is most definitely the woman. Charlie seems like the kind of guy who waits to offer you a bowl of chicken soup at a moment's notice. She almost tells him that she's the girl he kissed, but that's interrupted by his girlfriend calling. Also, she's not wearing glasses here. How do you not recognize her? I was thinking of proposing. To Miss Hall? What do you think? Provided you're not alone with anyone else in an elevator, I'm sure this will be a happy marriage. Meanwhile, in another 30-year-old sitcom establishing shot, congratulations, Adam! She's now created for you the perfect fire hazard. He tells her about how instantly in love he is with the girl he kissed. You can tell he's really in love, since he doesn't even recognize that she's sitting right in front of him. Ah, she's now wearing the best outfit to get buckets of blood on. He tests out the carriage to see if that's good enough to propose to Priscilla. Dashing through the snow on a one horse open sleigh. Nope, not proposing here. Plan B. This guy suffers from such a degree of facial blindness he could be in Cinderella. And why are they all sleeping in the same bed? Oh, it's wine night since they're out of ice cream. Tomorrow's yogurt night. Ooh, Caroline, go get the corkscrew. Okay, okay. Yeah, shove it through your ears. Adam is still conflicted about proposing. He just can't be with someone who has a smoother chest than him. And are they still talking about Wendy's love life? Why is she always falling for guys that are totally unavailable? You know what? Gotta give it to her, though. She does have pretty fine taste in men. They never have a single discussion that doesn't involve Wendy and men. Maybe they're being extra protective because their previous friend ended up with this guy. I'm not sure, but I think even the movie wants to watch something else. Charlie Brown Christmas, The Grinch, It's a Wonderful Life, Christmas Story, and uh, Muppets Christmas Carol. Oh, thanks. Those are way better choices than this. Why is this the Christmas film I'm watching? I haven't seen any of them. None of them? They're Christmas classics. Are you kidding? I, I cry every time Clarence gets his wings. Fucking spoiler alert! This movie does involve the tradition of ordering takeout Chinese and listening to another goddamn montage. 65 days a year, but just one day. I hope you get food poisoning. I'd wish for happiness, a lover's kiss, a world that's filled. Well, that's a weird reaction to watching Jingle All the Way. And she just fell asleep during Die Hard. Romance over. Priscilla comes home and is instantly upset when she finds Adam and Wendy asleep on the couch together. Oh yeah, how dare she be upset by this? So evil. Could this day get any worse? Mr. Hughes isn't available. Can I take a message? He called inquiring about the ring's return policy. Now that may sound bad, but he actually just wants to return an expired ring pop. Adam is all showered up. He has to look his best before delivering his yearly monologue about Huey Lewis and the news. Again, Priscilla is kind of crazy, too, as she finds the ring and pretends to be engaged to piss off Wendy. Adam certainly missed me. So much so that he couldn't wait to ask me to marry him. He asked you to marry him? You know, you could just fire her. She fires her. When you're done cleaning up here... You are done for good. You're fired. Then why would she stay and clean if you're just gonna fire her? And if you attempt to make any contact with him in the future, I will make good on my original threat. You will never work in this town again. Now clean this up. What? Why? You just fired her! God damn it, why are you still cleaning? This is terribly heartbreaking. They're gonna have to bump up yogurt night. Or just get some folksy cheering up from Charlie. Got the knots and the flutters all sorted out then? Yes, Charlie, I believe I have. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie's laughing because he also shit in Adam's Chinese food. I see this lasting, uh, well, forever, because I'd be terrified to leave her too. I will marry you. I will absolutely... <laughs> Priscilla, marry you. Just hold on a second. I know I the ring isn't perfect, but we can get it reset. I love it. I absolutely love it. And then Adam blew his brains out. But hopefully not before the big stage show. 
Tressa, what is wrong with Wendy? Why don't any of you have lives? Because he told me he had a flutter on an elevator and wasn't planning on getting married. Get out of town. I would if I didn't live here. <laughs> Finally, the Christmas engagement party. I'm sure Priscilla and Adam are around here somewhere. Say hello to Snowball. Snowball says, Merry Christmas, Patrick. What is it? He doesn't remember kissing that in the elevator either. The addition of a serial killer actually would liven this party up. I never officially proposed. I think it's absolutely charming how it happened. And then she poisons his eggnog. But we've got a play to get to for whatever reason. As Adam searches backstage for someone to shoot in the back of the head with a nail gun, he spots Wendy. You know, Miss Hall, I thought working for you was a dream come true. I thought I needed to be a successful interior designer. And I got caught up in your glamorous life. But that was before I knew who you really were. Mmm, it's yogurt night and Devil Wears Prada night. While Adam does break up with Priscilla, Wendy leaves because she's furious that Adam didn't recognize her from the elevator. It's about time she got pissed off at that. Oh, but that Priscilla is gonna get hers. It's not bad enough that she just got dumped, but she's also got to get hit in the face with a giant prop as well. <laughs> Don't worry, they meet again in the largest elevator ever created. Sure, they're already about to kiss, but they need a little shove again for no reason. You're both like Clarence if he just pushed Jimmy Stewart off the bridge. And then they were trapped in the elevator until they died. Just kidding. Slow Newsday Times fills us in on the rest. And then we can finally end this recipe for divorce. You can actually tell how sappy the movie is going to be. The more hallmarky the movie is, the more you can actually hear the poster saying, Mmm, hmm. And if you didn't get your fill of movies about kissing your boss's boyfriend in an elevator upon first meeting him, don't worry, there's a Christmas kiss too! And I'm very pissed that the tagline isn't this time with tongue. The only joy to come out of this movie is that the word joy is in the Charlie actor's name. Someone should really make a Jesus Bro style parody of these movies. And that's the end of our batch of Christmas episodes. What's coming up in store for the Cinema Snob in 2018? Who cares? At least I won't be wearing this fucking onesie anymore! But you know what? If this guy breaks her heart, my cowboy boots will just have to kick his ass so hard he'll be spitting out my spurs. In case the 2011 film A Christmas Kiss didn't give you your fill of kissing a random stranger in an elevator and spending the holidays in prison, then thank God we got the 2014 sequel A Christmas Kiss 2. It took three years for this sequel to come to us, probably because they spent two years and 11 months forgetting that they made the first movie, and then one month to spontaneously make the sequel. While the first one was about an assistant to a bitchy boss kissing a total stranger playboy in an elevator, this one is about an assistant to a bitchy boss kissing a total stranger playboy in an elevator. Ho <laughs> ho! Groundbreaking! No wonder it's from the same writer as the first film. She just dusted it off and changed the names. Directing duties this time go to Kevin Connor, the director of Motel Hell? Explains why the secret to Farmer Vincent's fritters was love. <laughs> Lame! This film stars Elizabeth Arnois of CSI, plus Adam Mayfield of All My Children, and while there may be some guest appearances from the first one, one person is sadly missing. As he told me he had a flutter on an elevator and wasn't planning on getting married. Get out of town. I would if I didn't live here. Charlie cannot be seen in this film because he was arrested for fucking the wise men's sheep. So get a warm cup of cocoa and light the fire, because we're about to enjoy the cinematic equivalent of re-gifting. 
This was an Easter film. Let it be known that my copy of the film is called Another Christmas Kiss because much like another cinema snob movie, there are redneck cannibals. Now the choice of director makes sense. Jenna is a very busy assistant at a fashion magazine as she carries empty cups of coffee to her boss. And no, not the boss from the first film, though her spirit is still here. Jenna, it's good to see you. Hey, Miss Hall. Elizabeth Rom's Miss Hall is much nicer in this film. That's what losing your cheating fiancé to your assistant when they had one kiss in an elevator will do to you. What about you? Any special Christmas plans? Let's just say I think I'll be enjoying this Christmas much more than the last one. I used to be a total bitch, but that's nothing a good whoop upside the head can't cure. Ha 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 ha! My heart was broken by a serial elevator kisser. Plus, this movie is cheating on Elizabeth Rom with another bitchy boss. You don't even want Mr. Ford's flowers, huh? No, they're far too Christmassy and red. I thought you were just as bah humbug about the holidays as I am. Lousy, career-obsessed woman, she needs to be hit on the head with a nutcracker and cheated on stat. Jenna's love life is so bare she's even dumped by her dad over the phone when he can't see her for Christmas. Hey, neighbor. Hope you're hungry. Because someone ordered a gay best friend at pork lo mein. I will. I'm just... Look, I'm not ready yet. You're ready. Now douse me with sweet and sour sauce and spray me with Christmas cotton candy. This is Sebastian. All he has is Jenna because, uh, he and his girlfriend broke up. Since you just let Abby down, why is it so easy for you guys? There's not enough beer in the world to answer that question. Uh, I think I may know the reason it didn't work out. Jenna is lonely and clueless. Thanks, Dad. Now I spend Christmas alone. Aww. Well, not unless you call Abby. <laughs> Yuck, honey, no! Barf humbug! Jenna's work and love life is all Sebastian lives for. Hey. Bernie. Do you have your designs with you? I've been standing by this door for hours waiting to give you advice. Oh, and I don't think Jenna and Sebastian simply live in the same building. I think they live in the same house because that is clearly just a house hallway that they stuck numbers on one of the bedroom doors. As her boss pretends to text so that she can ignore Jenna, she's already got stress this holiday. My brother just texted me that he is coming to town very soon. Oh. Jen is gonna bang your brother in an elevator. And if that weren't enough, there are no more models left this holiday. You do realize, with Tiffany long gone, you're going to have to model. I don't see why. It's too late to get to anyone else. Oh, and you're right. With That's how that works. Ooh, high fashion. This is part of their spirit Halloween sexy Santa suit edition. Here's her boss, Mia's wealthy playboy brother, Cooper Montgomery. His birth name was Sears Roebuck Montgomery Ward III Macy's, but they felt that was too unrelatable. This is an excellent spin-off of the first film, where the lead was clearly doing a Patrick Bateman impression through the whole film. Here we have someone doing a Timothy Bryce impression. Plus, there's another difference between the first film and this one. Bells on Bob Tail Ring, making spirits bright. What fun it is to ride in... The first one was about a kiss in the elevator. This one's about an orgy. Everyone knows that carolers never stop singing until they're off the clock. I can feel the romance in the air as Cooper steps in. Mrs. Claus, right? Back in her showgirl days? I am not... Showgirl claws. I You're feisty. Mm, I know I made a lot of assault in an elevator jokes in the first one, but uh, is that really what's happening in this one? Can you please call somebody so that uh, we can let them know that we're stuck and I can get back to work? Why would I want to do that when I can do this? So into this. I 
believe in Santa Claus more than I believe that this wouldn't end with him getting maced in the face. Anyway, off with my girlfriend who totally saw me kiss another girl. Let's go have dinner. Well, you certainly look ready for a cold drink to cool you off. Nothing happened. She literally saw you kiss a stranger in the elevator. You can tell me and Koopa are related since they both fake text all the time. <laughs> he has a funny looking dick. I heard there was an emergency, so I brought Ethiopian food and Sky Vodka. <laughs> I'm totally straight. Because I was standing in for a model for a shoot this evening. I was in like a sexy Mrs. Claus outfit. Please tell me you have these pictures. Trying too hard! Okay, just because I'm your neighbor doesn't underestimate the fact that I can't appreciate you dressed as a sexy Mrs. Claus. That's all I'm saying. You just made my point. I did, didn't I? <laughs> How long do I have to keep putting up this act? Anyway, Jenna, I need you to escort my sleazy brother. That's for constantly bringing me empty cups every morning. Meanwhile, at another room in the house that they stuck numbers on, at least this lead doesn't have the facial blindness of the last guy and didn't completely forget the person he kissed. So you found me, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Don't flatter yourself, no. I didn't find you. Uh, you're here. However, she probably wishes he forgot her. I have kissed many women. But last night, that kiss, that was amazing. I mean, that was, that was different. It was the first time the other person didn't kick me directly in the nuts. I haven't seen chemistry like this since stalked by a reality star. No, 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 no. You are definitely not a score. But I am going to win you over. You and I, we're gonna be friends. Well, Christmas with Don Jr. is going just as rapey as I thought it would. As they enjoy some delicious feces wrapped in dough, they have excellent romantic conversations, such as divorce and his sister's shitty love life. Speaking of his sister, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. reference. There, got that out of the way. So why are we talking about Christmas when we're sweating bullets because this is July? and businessy business bitch because businessy business. I would rather have a thriving, successful business than have some fun-filled, shallow life that's meaningless and chasing meaningless relationships. Okay. It's what her grandmother always taught her about love and business. Oh, and she knows about advancing the plot too, so she pawns her brother off to Jenna. This isn't a game. Oh, by the way, Cooper's not allowed to be in the same room with a woman. <laughs> Just FYI. I think all of these similar plot lines only means that Miss Hall is cursed. Oh my god, Cooper, <laughs> it's wonderful to see you. I didn't know you were in town. A surprise. I'm here to get engaged to you and then dump you for someone that you hate. The moral is, work less and get dumped and you'll be a better person. Yeah, I was a lot like me. I was married to my job, kept my mind busy to distract my heart. Well, you know, sometimes you just need to meet the right person to inspire you. And that person was a bash to the fucking head! All Cooper really needs is the approval of gay best friend since Pink Chef was busy in another TV Christmas movie. They're in the Department of Subtlety! You, uh, remember what I told you about yesterday, about what happened in the elevator? He's there with you right now, isn't he? You want me to pretend I'm your fake boyfriend, don't you? That's right, baby. I can hear everything you're saying. Now kiss me again! Dad calls back seconds after we last saw him, only they quickly changed his shirt. It's a totally different day. I, I heard you were having dad problems. I have copies of Mean Girls and Cake Wars, because I'm on loan from both. <laughs> My god, these images are perfect for being shot in a shopping mall photo booth. I'm gonna steal one and rub my dick with it. <laughs> Wouldn't be a Christmas kiss movie without evil boss crushing our hero's dreams of being a fashion designer. What do you think? You know what I think, Jenna? I, I just think that you're indispensable to me and... And I think that you should really focus on what you're good at. Which is bringing me empty cups of coffee and banging my brother. Hello, she threw away her illustrations. I can rub these on my dick, too. After I hid the picture I stole from her under my laptop. <laughs> that happened. Now he wants to take her out drinking before Sebastian gets the chance. Uh, oh, right. Uh, Dick Cooper has a girlfriend. I forgot. I'm Brittany, Cooper's girlfriend. 
Oh, yes. And not a bimbo model, it appears. I imagine a model has a much more exciting life than an assistant. Your boyfriend kissed a stranger in an elevator right in front of you. I don't think you're a winner in this situation. Okay, honey, pour the wine and dish. And I'm not talking about the dishes we'll be eating this orange chicken on. <laughs> Sebastian's her guardian angel and nothing else. I have to go shopping tomorrow now. Will you go with me? Well, I guess since I am your boyfriend, I am duty bound. You want to go shopping. Dashing through the snow, when a one horse open sleigh, o'er the fields we go, laughing all the way. Hey, there's lots of snow on the ground. Oh, wait, it's fine. Must have melted during the cut. Much like the first one, you can also use the creepy music in this movie, too. That guy that we always see at the bar? He's watching you. Mm, so surprising for two movies structured around being grabby. Oh shit, now they have to pretend to be a couple to make Cooper jealous. Hi, <laughs> I'm Sebastian. The boyfriend. Yeah, it's my boyfriend. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, I am not threatened by you at all. Beautiful. <laughs> Charming, sweet, oh my gosh, caring, okay, okay, emotionally beautiful. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I am totally sexually attracted to her. <laughs> that does it then. Cooper instantly breaks up with his girlfriend when he finds out Sebastian isn't taken. Those reasons why you think we fit, I'm not feeling it anymore. I, I don't want to fit for the reasons that you think we fit. Twas the night before a Christmas fitting, and all through the ass, not a cheek was clenching. Not even with a mouse. Ah, oh, I'm so sad to see this relationship end. They're different only for the moment, but you'll come back to me. You always do. How often has this happened? Now I'm gonna rub my chest with sugar cookie frosting and make lewd phone calls. Is everything okay? Is everything all right with Mia? I didn't wake Sebastian, did I? Oh no, I put Sebastian to bed with a copy of Funny Girl and a bowl of microwave popcorn. Her first order of business when she goes back to work is to fire the janitor! Uh-oh, someone's thorny this season. You can see in his face just how much he does not believe her about Sebastian. Well, because I was hoping that you feel the same way I do. I have a boyfriend. Sebastian is a g he yeah, right. All of this romance seems too good to be true. What's your angle here? You want one more romantic encounter with me to get me out of your system, is that it? One more notch on your bedpost? What's so bad about that, babe? Now if you excuse me, I've got a phone call. Honey, it's her dad calling. They put me in another shirt and I'm calling to say that I want another notch on a bedpost for Christmas. Your mother died and I need some hookers. Cooper is gearing up his move of moving in closer to get that desperation kiss. Then the food and flowers were left behind for Mia to have a romantic date with herself and her career. Don't be sad, Jenna. We're back in Bang Central, an elevator. And the lighting is telling me there's a car driving right at us. There's only one thing that Jenna is good for in this office. I need this coffee. Thank you. <laughs> Bad news, I'm afraid. It's served with a cup of air. Time for a meeting in the conference room. It's just a table shoved into the corner of the studio break room. Cooper is here to throw a huge Christmas party and also get input on where the hell Amsterdam is on this map. He's clearly doing this party to work closely with Jenna and also because he wants to hit Miss Hall with a nutcracker. He even gets help from the company photographer who is very busy putting up a collage to find a missing girl. There is one clever gag in the movie where if you look closely, you can see that he wrote plus Cooper on Jenna's office door. These elevator hookups are getting more awkward. <laughs> chemistry. Also, where the hell is that mistletoe? It's not in the elevator. That looks like it's on someone's rooftop. Oh, and you want it to get more awkward? Third floor. 
<laughs> Way to bring back bad memories for Miss Hall and drive her right back into the bottle. If a kiss happens in an elevator... It stays in the elevator? Not always. I've been alone ever since. I'm forcing this smile because being a workaholic turned the gods against me. As they search for a Christmas tree, I wonder if he still thinks she and Sebastian are together. Oh my gosh, matching trees, selfie! Yeah. <laughs> selfie matching trees! Look at us with our matching trees! Ah! We're never gonna see Sebastian's mysterious girlfriend, are we? No time for that, we need a montage, which means just speed up the film. The three of them then decided to live together as one. <laughs> Let's stuff Cooper with tinsel. And by a Christmas miracle, the photographer was instantly able to make all of Jenna's fashion concepts a reality. He's Santa. Cooper also hung these in every square foot in the office. He's gotta kiss something. So much mixed feelings here, and with Sebastian being busy giving career advice to Grace Adler, Miss Hall can fill in. Maybe he's worth taking a chance on. I'm not good at taking chances. Neither was I when I had my heart broken. I'm on a bottle of Xanax a day. Just kidding. This movie shows that she found her true love. <laughs> I think. My love! <sighs> Everything's going to work out just fine. What is with this movie hooking up gay men with women? Unfortunately, Cooper got drunk and ordered a third act breakup. His ex-girlfriend, Brittany, is here to make sure he doesn't end up with Jenna. So you know what that means. She takes advantage of him in his sleep. <laughs> I had no idea that this movie was gender-swapped 80s movie that didn't age well. Take this, Jenna. No way this movie is only going to be an hour long. We need forced drama. <laughs> She's not the only one who gets heartbroken. As delightful as the photo and the text that you sent Jenna last night. I'm sorry, what? Oh, don't act so shocked. You cheated on me, you bastard! And I used my special tinsel! Thankfully, Sebastian loudly explains everything that Brittany did. Now Cooper can officially leave her. We are done. We're through. You said that we're through before, but you can't change. You're drawn to me. Yes, but you didn't rape me before. Doesn't mean she can't get Sebastian fired as one last fuck you. I'm so sorry. This is all my fault. Are you kidding? It's like the best thing that ever happened to me. I feel totally awesome. Yeah. I lost my job at Christmas, but thank God your love life is working out. And speaking of love life... Having someone that, no matter how bad things get or how messed up everything gets, you still want to make things right with them. Don't tell me that. Tell Abby. Ew, but I don't wanna! Alright, I'm supposed to be straight. It's working out for Sebastian, too, as Cooper gets him his job back. Thank God he was already sitting at home in his work clothes. Plus, the company Christmas party's a total smash. They put their 50% off rack on some mannequins, and they place last-minute decorations in the movie producer's living room. And Jenna gets back together with her dad. Cooper called me, and I'm glad he did. I'm so glad I could be here to celebrate your special evening with you. <laughs> I never listened to you or took you seriously before, but a random stranger called me and set me straight. Unlike the first one, at least the boss didn't have to be hit in the face and dumped in order to turn nice. And I was wrong before. We actually do meet Sebastian's, uh, let's say, girlfriend. Hey! <laughs> Secret keeper. Hey, Abby! <laughs> the deal was we have to stay feet apart from each other. We only first met minutes ago. Now everything works out and he can finally murder her in an elevator. You know the old saying, every kiss with a billionaire playboy in an elevator begins with K. Thankfully, nothing in this movie happens too soon. I want to spend the rest of my life proving my love to you. Will you marry me? <laughs> This is going to last as long as Sebastian's relationship. And this is a lie because there's a mid credit scene. Floor. Uh, 
I'm game if you are. These movies have very fun ideas about sexual assaulters hanging out in elevators. <laughs> the film really wants to wrap up because the end credits were pulled over for speeding. Well, the movie's every bit as much of a conveyor belt Christmas film as the first one, both of which aired on Ion Television. Although this one doesn't villainize the person in the right, and its two lead characters have more than one personality. Although Not Since Can't Stop the Music has a movie desperately wanted a gay best friend, but be so afraid of actually making him gay that they constantly lie to me and tell me he's straight. Someone needs to have a serious talk with Pink Chef. But this isn't the end of Kissy Face Elevator Christmases, as 2015 brought us Merry Kissmas. <laughs> Double puke. And it's even from the same writer as the Christmas Kiss films, completely ripping off her own material. And that's a problem I gotta worry about next year. By that time, hopefully they'll let me back in elevators after my fifth year in a row of being maced. Ugh, these onesies kill my game. Oh, a Christmas tree. That's new and different. Merry Kissmas, everyone! That's right, I said Kissmas because it's that time of year when we step into an elevator and kiss whoever is in there and just see what happens. In the past, we've spotlighted other holiday elevator kiss movies like The Christmas Kiss, the sequel A Christmas Kiss 2, and then we have this film about two complete strangers who kiss on an elevator and then fall in love. Seriously, why is this a genre? But for some reason, it's not called A Christmas Kiss 3. It's called Merry Kissmas. Let's find out who wrote this. Oh, it's Joni Kane, who also wrote the two Christmas Kiss movies, which makes me wonder if the movie originally started out as a Christmas Kiss 3, or if the script was a potential draft for a third Christmas Kiss. No matter, it's sure to ring in the holiday spirit before you're trapped in an elevator and it becomes soaked in your own urine. The film is directed by Michael Pfeiffer, the director of a ton of Lifetime-style thrillers and Christmas movies, and some of the 2000s direct-to-video serial killer movies. But here is where we play which titles are the funniest. Hmm, I'm gonna have to go with Here Kills the Bride, Deadly Daycare, and My Daughter's Psycho Friend. But let's move on with Merry Kissmas. I love these Christmas movies that take place in a small, snowy New England town. And with the best theme songs. You elevate my love. I can't wait to get across the Frisco Bay. You elevate my love. Oh yeah, go into an elevator and say you elevate my love. <laughs> I dare you. That's it, I'm out of here. Get me to another building not playing that song. Okay, fine, I'll let in our leads, Kayla and Carlton. Kayla is played by Carissa Lee Staples. Her funniest title is I Hope They Serve Beer in Hell. And David O'Donnell's funniest title, Wyatt Earp's Revenge. Same director as this movie. I think this is relatable to anyone who's made a Hallmark, Ion, or Lifetime Christmas movie. No, no, there's not enough Christmas decorations. I want more. Because I'm pretty sure every production designer on these movies has said that line. I mean, look at what the Hallmark Holiday Headquarters looks like. So Carlton is a film and stage director, and well, let the exposition explain their relationship. If you want me to be your fiancé and business manager, you need to listen to me. And as the person reviewing the movie, it's important that we cut over to a shot of me now, so that I may have a reaction to that. Carlton is the movie's asshole who demands quality. I only stay in five-star hotels. Oh, you knew that. Yes, here we can leave our doors open, and they have the warmest staff. <laughs> oh, we're not married yet. We're going to wait until after the new year. 
I bet my $5 bonus that she cheats on him in an elevator. But they're off to his newest play, The Nutcracker, the story of what happens when your love gets too elevated. He seems like the kind of character who would demand something on a sign be bigger. No, 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 my name should be bigger! You're from L.A., stop with that accent! And didn't the first one also have to do with theater? And like the first one, sometimes the villain is right. It's just that you, you treat me like your business manager rather than your fiancé. Yeah, but you are my business manager. <laughs> He's kinda got you there. No, 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 these dancers must be bigger and have my name tattooed on their heads. Sadly, though, with his schedule, he'll miss the caroling. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. Mmm, caroling with the spirit of crew members singing Christmas songs in June. <laughs> They're busy. I'll dump all of my problems onto this Santa, who smells like delicious eggnog made of nothing but bourbon. When it got to the happily ever after part of our story, the relationship kind of turned into a business deal. Ho 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 ho! I didn't ask to hear your problems, lady. Just give me a dollar and move on. You know she's the nice one because she thinks of others. I wish that young girl over there has all of her dreams come true. Oh, good job. You screwed us all over. That's Tina Hitler. Not only does everyone know who she is, but she also appears to be the only customer in these places. Kayla Hansen, oh, it is you. Or should I say, Mrs. Carlton Wells. And you're from New Jersey, stop that. Why is everyone in this movie so weird? The thing that you could do the most is give this little fan. Did you just pull that out of your crotch? Why did you just happen to have that on you? But who's gonna be the one she kisses? Oh, this guy, Dustin, a master chef at buying store-bought cookies. That's not how they look, it's how they taste. Now I know why you lost every cooking show you were on. So who is she supposed to be? Well, I'm counting on you, Kim, my trusty assistant and favorite cousin. Aww. And as it cuts back to me, your movie critic, I'm here to say thanks for the exposition. Dustin is played by Brant Doherty, who's been in enough of these movies. He's in the parody film A Christmas Movie Christmas. My god, these movies have become self-aware. But maybe this movie will surprise us. Holy shit, it's Doris Raymond! Maybe she'll be the one who kisses him in the elevator. Or just get incredibly creepy and gropy. Who puts mistletoe in an elevator? I do. <laughs> This isn't a Christmas kiss movie, this is a gag gift. <laughs> He's trying to get away from her while not wanting to hurt her feelings while she just assaults him. Another case of reverse the sexes and it's a lifetime thriller. Thanks for nothing, lover boy. And then she hit him. That makes this relationship seem good by comparison. Now I can't even get you to pay attention to me unless you need me for work. Hey, cut him some slack. His fashion designer is missing and was last seen getting on an elevator somewhere. Eh, even though they're having problems, I can see how these two ended up together. You know, I actually kind of like that Wizzy cheese. So... Wizzy. He squeezes Easy Cheese on her nipples. But back to Dustin checking in on the restaurant with people drinking empty glasses of water. So, I've had an interesting day. What? What does that mean? <laughs> I was taken advantage of in an elevator. Sure, Dustin is the caterer for Kayla and Carlton's engagement party, but let the movie give some backstory. I read online that his dad would never let him celebrate Christmas, so now he just goes way overboard. <laughs> I read it on the movie's Wikipedia page. Too bad he leaves before we again see Carlton making an ass of himself. We're just happy to have her in town, even if it's just for a short while. If you'll excuse me, just one moment. Darla, would you get me a glass of wine? Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to give my fans my room number. Everyone recognizes me for some reason. Still, some things he does make sense. We decided to hold off on the wedding until after the new year. He's trying to focus on the Nutcracker performance and... I mean, yeah, why was the wedding scheduled during the holidays while you were working on the Nutcracker anyway? Carlton will explain. Sweetums, 
We really need to get back to the hotel. My fans are meeting me there, but only the hot ones. You know, some people are a little too surprised by things in these films. By God, I haven't seen one of these since every thrift store I've been to. Naturally, he comes in to buy the nutcracker for the party, which Kayla also wants to buy. Relax, I'm sure a place called Mrs. Tiddlywinks has about 40 nutcrackers in storage. And if they don't, the shop owner will chase Kayla all throughout the town like a complete mad woman and disturbing the carolers. I don't think that's caroling. I think they're just day drunk while on a lunch break. Why is she chasing her like this? What is with this movie and everyone wanting to assault our leads? And when is the Kissmas coming in? hi ya yi that was anticlimactic. <laughs> Sorry about that. You know how it is getting chased by older ladies. I suppose they should introduce themselves. I realize this is a plot about strangers kissing on an elevator, but even then, this is escalating fast. <laughs> I'm sorry, I mean elevating fast. But the most awkward part is still turning into a stalker thriller when Doris Roberts seems furious he is elevator cheating on her. Why is this so sinister? So, here we are again. Look, restraining orders don't exist in this universe. You gotta kiss the old lady. Okay, unfortunate cut. Did she murder him? Find out when we come back. Atari would like to thank you for taking us into your homes. We wish you all a happy holiday. <laughs> No, she didn't murder him. He's happy because he kissed Kayla, despite getting groped again. Look, I know we're planning this catering event, but I've got things on my mind. Hello? Dustin? Dustin, are you listening? Your pants are wet. Even she's thinking about the kiss over an empty cup of coffee. Kayla? Oh, sorry. It was just the best orgasm I've had since meeting Carlton. Please continue. Never mind. She's ready for round two. And again, making Carlton sometimes seem like the reasonable one. Doesn't he have anything better to do? <laughs> hey, yeah. What does he think I am? His production manager or something? Oh, right. I am. Relax, though. He goes back to being a dick in no time. There's going to be a lot of press at the party. Oh, yes, I... I made some phone calls. But I, I don't want press at our engagement party. She gets some bad memories, though, as she sees the nutcracker she went in to buy, which led to Tiddlywinks chasing her down the street in a murderous rampage. Yeah, yeah, I went back this morning to buy him, but he was gone. I bought him this morning. You mean you didn't also check the six other Christmas shops on the same block that are selling the same thing? I can tell that everyone has faith in Kayla and Carlton's engagement. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? The chemistry? I mean, it's not a Hollywood engagement party unless someone is banging the caterer. Look, it'd probably be awkward regardless. Dustin, have you officially met Kayla? Oh, did I not mention we made out with each other? I like how Carlton's a dick without even knowing that his fiance kissed Dustin. I trust we're all finished with the small talk. Choose your next witticism carefully, Mr. Dustin. It may be your last. And even with that, sometimes he's right. Trying to make me jealous by flirting with that caterer. What? How could you say it that? It was obvious, Kayla! How dare you accuse me of flirting with the man I cheated on you with? And then, in a shocking turn of events, she actually breaks up with him on the spot. I mean, I knew they would break up, but I didn't think it'd be only 35 minutes into the movie. This is good news for Dustin. She's the one you kissed in the elevator, isn't she? Uh oh, how do you think? 
because your pants are wet again. But he thinks they're still engaged. She's not really with Carlton. But what do you mean? I read the Wikipedia synopsis again. Just go kiss her so we can wrap this movie up before the 40 minute mark. And spare no expense on the beautiful Christmas imagery. When I see a rat carrying a french fry across the subway floor, <laughs> I think of Christmas. Even the most minor of things are really confusing in this. Like when he shows up to deliver the nutcracker to Kayla, and the doorman wants to be bribed. Sure. I'd be happy to take your item to the suite. But isn't that your job? Seems like a nice gesture, but he kept his and got her the one at Spencer Gifts with the assless cloak. Oh right, they still have to share a hotel room together. Awkward. Just so you know, I have the power to have you killed. By that I mean I'm basing this character in my new play on you, and she will die in an elevator crash. He's pissed she's writing about the history of the Nutcracker, and again he has a point! Well, I hope you're not working on it now. Why would it matter if I did? I mean, she is still his production manager, right? Oddly, it's when he acts like a human being that he's wrong. Yesterday, when I called you out about being jealous, it was actually me who was jealous. In fairness, you had reason to be jealous. Although I do like that some of these scenes are shot the same way they would be if it was foreshadowing the Nutcracker coming to life and trying to kill her. Which may happen. Look, he's shoving his horny old neighbor into a grinder to stop her from hurting another person again. Please, don't disturb him. Dustin! Dustin! <laughs> There's no reason he shouldn't have been able to hear that. When she returns the Nutcracker to him, I still think it's a horror film. He chases her down, but for whatever reason, these halls are shot like a labyrinth. What is this, a haunted house? Oh, that's just Doris on top of the elevator, jumping down the shaft and trying to get to his lips first. That would be something, considering how easily impressed they are. No one has ever done something so kind and generous. No one's ever bought you anything? Lies, lies, I gave her an autographed picture of me. Hell, but even an autograph in the movie would entail clunky exposition. It's Kim, right? Yeah, Dustin's assistant and cousin. We needed to remind you of this so you wouldn't think I'm also a romantic interest. She's just there to guilt trip Kayla into spending time with Dustin. Kayla, would you be willing to help us out bake some cookies for the animal shelter fundraising table? There's no way for me to say no to this without coming across as the villain. No need for them to have more dialogue though. Instead, elevate their love through song and making a mess in the kitchen. And that sawing isn't even the most sinister sounding thing in the scene. Well, the real happy's coming up. So what's the happy? You'll see. Hmm. The happy is when we sacrifice you to appease Krampus. I really hope Carlton is doing fine after the breakup. I'm ready for you, Maestro. What is it, my sugar plum fairy? I think he's okay. Moving on. Ah yes, this is the happy they were talking about. I just always assume a human sacrifice will happen in one of these movies. Dustin, though, is a great guy, as they keep reminding us. He offered to donate all the cookies for the charity event. He's a good guy. <laughs> You're making him look too wholesome. Now I think he's got more bodies buried under his kitchen than Doris. With her and Carlton broken up, a lot of the conflict coming up is either forced or they just kill time by going around looking at dogs so the audience will be like, "Oh, That is when it isn't the season of guilt tripping. He needs a new home, Dustin. My place, my building, my life, it's not really dog friendly. Wow, who knew he was related to Tina Hitler? Plus, there's only one reason they were invited here anyway. Okay, great. I got a couple more doors to close up. Do you want to help me? Sure. So the employee could bang Dustin's assistant in the toy room. And I'd rather watch that than these two flirt. You are welcome. You are sort of welcome. And you are most welcome. 
Don't ever be that complicated about saying you're welcome again. But here he gets to witness her still not being a good manager. You know, you're allowed to check your messages if you want. I don't want to check my messages. You know, Carlton is probably going to fire you. I'm not sure I like this couple. I know my interest in someone would decrease if they inserted Twitter into the conversation for no reason. If I were to tweet it in 140 characters or less, hmm. the romance was replaced with business. Hashtag no longer interested. But she does eat pizza better than she does her job as Carlton's manager. How was rehearsal? Stressful. I texted you repeatedly. I had a busy day. I needed you! Why don't you just quit? Or why doesn't he fire her? This argument is giving me a headache. Please, don't guilt trip me. Your behavior right now is what's not fair. But, but you cheated on him! And you're sabotaging his show! Hell, when he tells her he still loves her, it looks like he's trying. What if the twist is that this whole movie has been these two's third act breakup? Eh, but he's a dick though. Go with the other guy, right? He's got a lot more to offer than just being the steadfast friend, you know? But I'm sure you figured that out during your little elevator kiss. Yeah, if you can't know everything about a person after kissing them in an elevator, will you ever truly know them? And he's back to being evil again, I think. Maybe he walks in with another girl, so sure, let's look at him like he's Satan. Puppies are special. Is that what you're looking for? No. I want passion. Now bark for me as I cover you in fleas. He does leave to spare her feelings. Who knew they would both have dinner reservations at the same house made up to look like a restaurant? When we come back, I don't know, someone will finally call elevator maintenance. You again? Now I have some last minute gift problems. Don't worry, Hickory Farms has over a hundred gift packs. Gifts with mild cheddar cheese, smoky bar cheese, we are the super cheese market. Uh, yes, and Hickory Farms specialties like beef stick and sweet hot mustard. Oh, look, I'll just put myself in your hand. Okay, <laughs> let's see. It's 14 L's. Mm -hmm. How many reindeer? Well, there's Dasher and Dancer and Prancer. Okay, we gotta force some conflict in here. So Dustin randomly acts like an even bigger jerk than Carlton when Kayla makes invitations for him. No, I don't I don't want your money. And I, I don't want you doing free work. Dustin. Can you seriously just kiss her again so we can go home and drink four bottles of wine while watching a Christmas kiss? Eh, they'll patch things up. Dustin, why were you just a jerk to her? Go apologize. I don't think I should. I don't want these people to end up with anyone. Er, well, maybe she should end up with Santa Claus. I wish I knew how to set boundaries. Ho 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 ho! Would you mind using that wish on this lady? She sees me when I'm sleeping and knows when I'm awake. But hey, at least someone cares about Dustin and Kayla getting together. Will you hurry up and apologize to her already? This is the only thing I have going on in my life right now. Sure, he apologized to her in a new app where their headshots talk to each other. But then she also apologizes to him. Why? All she did was make him some invitations. But we need to make him likable again, so let's have him adopt the dog after all. And they know just where to go. Guess they have to kiss the dog now. You know these characters have chemistry when many of their scenes together are during a montage with music playing over their dialogue. But I guess they kiss well, which makes sense. The movie would be a spectacular failure if they didn't. And they do look good together. And how could this be a failure when Santa acts like they just caught him coming out of a sex shop? Ho 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 ho! These ornament beads are for the elves, not Santa! Apparently she does still work for Carlton, I think. Have they even seen each other in the past several days? When they do see each other again, though, Carlton tries making it up to her with a nice dinner. You need to be focusing on the ballet. You are more important to me, Kayla. 
I mean, I'll give him this. He's the only character in the movie that shows growth and has an arc for the time being. When he wants to get back together with her, she asks him for some time to think about it. Truly, he never did appreciate her being a terrible production manager. Hell, he's one of the only people in this town that doesn't sound like an old pervert, unlike Santa. Good morning, Smiles. Oh, where's the smile? Ho, 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 come on. You know what would make Santa smile? Tell me your wish by sitting on my lap. She actually does go to Dustin to tell him that Carlton wants a second chance, then she and Dustin split up. She probably would have stayed with Dustin, then she walked in on him trying to teach the dog to be a coaster. None of these relationships seem right. Yeah, I'm grateful too. For all the special times that we had. She and Carlton were engaged while you two only knew each other for, what, two days? I wish the movie ended here, with Kayla and Carlton getting back together. Unfortunately, the other characters in the film take this breakup seriously. I've never been miffed at you, or disappointed in you, until now. Damn, is she talking to me? <laughs> Relax, we'll get to the 2019 Black Christmas soon enough. She even calls him a coward, but look at that face. I don't know, I'm gonna go get you some cats, cause clearly you're gonna be a crazy old cat person. Wrong, wrong. The correct line is, I'm gonna get you some cats because you're a giant pussy. Everyone is giving the characters shit for her giving Carlton a second chance. And she looks very unhappy when watching him, um, being a director? I don't know. However, whatever growth he had is gone, since he instantly goes back to being a dick, so she'll want to break up again. Oh, just... Oh. Give me a glass of wine, would you tell him? And yet, he's still not as unlikable as the friend who comes in with the I told you so face and narks on him for spotting him with one of his actresses at the restaurant earlier. I saw them getting cozy the other day at the hotel when we were sitting at the bar. You mean when the two of them were broken up? <laughs> yeah, the we were on a break defense works here. How dare that son of a bitch! We are officially done. You cheated on him! Although she does break up with him in the best way, by complimenting him. Carlton, you are an amazing director. You are an amazing person. And the, the ballet you choreographed will be amazing. Yes, you're right. I am amazing. Come, darling, I'm gonna make you a star. There's only five minutes of the movie left, but if you think that's not enough time to go to the airport, but then change your mind and have a climactic trapped in the elevator scene, you don't know how much they could fit into the finale of a TV Christmas movie. I'm still extremely disappointed that there isn't a pile of feces in the corner. He's been there for 30 whole minutes. Oh, but it gets crazier. He starts talking to the magic elevator and yelling at it for screwing up his life. And she hears everything. Thanks a lot, elevator. You brought the most incredible woman into my life. Now you're stopping me from getting to her. Um, okay, so he's crazy. If I leave right away, maybe Carlton will take me back. I think we all know who caused this magic to happen. No, no, not Santa Claus, but Father Christmas, of course. He's gonna make it snow, too. But get in the elevator fast. We have to wrap this up. And... <laughs> the dozens of other tenants are now cannibals who all thought they were gonna fit on the same elevator. There is some growth with these movies. They wait one year later for the scene where he proposes to her. Usually in these Christmas movies, they get engaged after bonding over hot cocoa at the town social to save the local toy shop from being bought out by Big Fudge. So that's Merry Kissmas, huh? Given some of the other episodes I've had this year, I was expecting a different kind of Kissmas. And I've got some questions. Why wasn't it called The Christmas Kiss 3? And what the hell happened to the Doris Roberts character? She shows up in two scenes to assault our lead and then just disappears and is never talked about again. That went nowhere. As much as I love watching these Hallmark Christmas movies, because even though this wasn't on Hallmark, that's still just the name of the genre. 
There is a sameness, unthreatening comfort food quality to them that actually does make them hard to do episodes on. This one, though, there was some material here. From creepy-ass Doris Roberts, to the plot being just as stupid as in the other Elevator movies, to the villain actually having some solid points sometimes, while being a cartoon. All this did make Merry Kissmas worth talking about, and it had some craziness to it beyond your run-of-the-mill Candace Cameron, Lacey Chabert Christmas movies. I should know, these movies are my favorite time of year, and I do watch them on my downtime without even reviewing them, because this is our us time. And the best one this year, obviously the Brandon Routh one, it was the one with cats in it. And I'm fairly certain Chaplin and Buster had a cameo. But stay tuned next week when we step away from the TV movies and review a PG-13 slasher film, which makes as much sense as a Hallmark porno. Let's just say Grandma wanted to go down with a kiss.